Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to the world of physics. So we were discussing about the channel sound, and we have almost completed two classes. The first class we have seen about what is sound, and after that we have studied about some general terms. Then we have discussed the first characteristic of sound loudness. Then after that we have seen the second class we have seen two more characteristics of sound that is the pitch and quality of timbre of sound. Today we are going to discuss about what is music and what is a noise. What is a music and what is a noise. Then after that we will discuss about uh, musical instruments. In musical instruments we will discuss two things today wind instruments and uh, string instruments. Now we have started with the music and noise. In our daily life we used to hear so many types of sound from when we are waking up to still we are sleeping we used to hear a set of sound. When we are just thinking about these sounds what we are hearing a day some sounds will be there which is going to produce a pleasant feeling in us and some sounds will be there which is going to produce an irritation or a disturbance in us. So depending upon these points we are going to divide the sound into music and noise. Music and noise. For example, when we are speaking about music, suppose violin or any musical instruments, keyboard can be there every day in the assembly you used to hear the sound of the keyboard. When we are able to hear the musical sound or the sounds from the musical instruments, it used to produce a pleasant feeling in us. Or when the, suppose when the teacher is taking class, he or she may be taking class maybe for 10 minutes, 15 minutes or 25 minutes, but it's not going to produce a disturbance on you, or it is not going to irritate your ear. Okay, now there are some situations, suppose if you are standing uh, in the city where there is a huge traffic, the sound of waves will be there, sound of different horns will be there. Are you able to hear that for a long time? Is it giving a pleasant feeling on you or an irritating feeling on you? There are many examples in our surrounded by. Even when the class is going on, sometimes we used to have some pujas at the outside and they used to keep big speakers towards our class. Are we able to get good concentration when the speakers are working? Or are we able to get some disturbances? Or another some example, suppose when the teacher is speaking, only he is speaking and you are not getting an irritation. But if the teacher is not there, if all the students are making sound, will it give a pleasant feeling to you? No, it's not going to give a pleasant feeling. Or when we are here hearing the sound, siren sound of ambulance or police vehicles, is it giving a good pleasant feeling on you, on your ear? No. These Depending upon these two effects on our ear, we are going to discuss about music and noise. When we are discussing about music, when we are hearing a sound which is going to give you a pleasant feeling on your ear, will be considered as music. All the sounds what you hear in a day, which is giving you a pleasant feeling on your ear, then we can consider them as musical sound. We can consider them as a musical sound. Even we used to hear the songs, music. For a long time also there is no problem, it's a good feeling. Now, the sound what we are getting a day, which all are giving you a 
irritating feeling and irritation on your ear will be considered as noises or disturbances considered as noises the sound which is going to disturb you or the sound which is going to irritate you is called noises now we have studied about the wave form of sound music and noises are having different wave forms i have marked here or drawn here two diagrams one is representing the wave form of music and another one is going to represent the wave form of a noise just look at the diagram here we can see that the wave is a regular form the wave is having a regular form so the musical sound is going to have regular vibrations musical sound sound is produced by regular vibrations and just look at the diagram of the noise the wave representation here you can see it's not a regular it's a regular variations are there over the time the, the sound wave is going to vary vary from one form to another so it's a we can call it they are irregular vibration they are irregular vibrations so we can consider noises are produced by irregular vibrations so two more points total four points we have to remember now what is music is going to give or the sound waves which is going to give a present feeling is called music the sound wave is going to irritate you or disturb you is called a noise the sound wave which is having music is going to have a regular wave form or a regular vibrations and noise is produced by irregular vibrations or irregular form of wave now on page number 96 on your textbook there are some differences are given what are the differences first one musical sound has a pleasing effect a pleasing effect on our ears whereas noise sound going to have an unpleasant effect or disturbance on our ear and it is produced by music is produced by regular vibrations whereas noise is produced by irregular vibrations then if this one is a music the amplitude of the music is not going to be changed the amplitude will remain almost same for the music itself with amplitude frequency also will not be changing fastly that means if the sound is a musical one the amplitude and the uh, frequency will not change suddenly slowly only the changes will be there but in case of noise the amplitude and frequency of the noise sound will be sudden change will have a sudden change and the wave form is a regular one for music and the wave form is irregular one for a noise these are the differences between noise and musical sounds it's very important then there is one do you know is there some people suffer from the fear of music which is known as melophobia melophobia the person who is having something from the fear of music is called a melophobia now the next topic what we are going to discuss is musical instruments musical instruments in musical instruments we are going to discuss first of all wind instruments we are going to discuss about wind instruments some instruments like especially flute then saxophone the clarinet the french horn the trumpet and the trombone are some of the wind instruments on the page number is given page number 96 trumpet is given or french horn is given or flute you know you know we are blowing air there that means we taste the motion of air right now so we are blowing air so that these instruments are producing sound 
And you know, suppose if you just uh, uh, imagine the fruit, there are some holes out there. The person who is going to uh, play the fruit, he will blow air in the fruit, and with the other hand, he is changing the or he is closing some holes and opening one. That means he is just increasing or decreasing the air which is going to vibrate, air form which is going to vibrate. Okay. So, when we are adjusting the length of the air column, the sound will have a variation. The pitch of and the frequency of the wind instruments can be varied by changing the length of vibrating air column. The pitch and the frequency of the wind instruments can be changed by varying the length of the vibrating air column. That's why the flute or this uh, French horn or they used to play with the air. They will blow the air at the same time they will be uh, using their fingers, they will be pressing some keys or they will be closing and opening some holes. So they are just they are adjusting the uh, air from this much air is there. By opening this one, the air will be opening this much. If you open this one, it will be this much. If you open the last one, it will be air from the air from Okay. So the frequency and pitch of the vibrating body or the sound of the wind instruments is controlled by increasing and decreasing the length of the vibrating air cord. There is an activity for you, by number 96. Suppose we are going to take some test tubes. For example, four test tubes we have taken. And in each four test tubes, we are going to pour different levels of water. Different levels of water. The first test tube I have, I'm going to go already a little bit, then increasing, increasing, increasing. And we have a few minutes. Now, you have to blow the air with the, that means you can take the test uh, tube and you can just blow the air, you will be able to hear the sound. Is there a difference between these sounds produced by this test tube? The pitch of and vibrating air column increases with the decrease in the length of air column. That means the pitch and frequency will be increasing when they are decreasing the length that means it will be maximum for D, minimum for A. That means when the length is increasing, then the pitch and frequency is going to be decreased. And when the length is less, the pitch and frequency will be maximum. Then, second one is stringed instruments. There are some string instruments, musical instruments are there, which are the sitha, violin, etc. are examples of string instruments. And pitch and frequency of the string instruments may be controlled by, or they are controlled by, the width of the string and length of the string. Width of the string and the length of the string. And most probably these instruments will have a wooden frame. And a wooden frame there will be, that means suppose uh, those who are playing sitar and you can see that uh, they will just uh, make the string to vibrate at the same time, they will adjust the length of the strings by touching the with the hand, they will increase or decrease the length of the string. Then, so it is clear that uh, we have to change pitch and frequency. How we will change the pitch and frequency of the string instruments? By increasing or decreasing the length of the string, as well as by increasing or decreasing the length of the, now the width of the, thickness of the string. If you look at the violin or the sitar, you can see that there will be four, uh, five strings will be there, and the strings will one will be very thin compared to the extreme. And the one that will have more thickness, the other end will have less thickness. Now there is an activity that you have to show that which of the sound depends upon thickness of the vibrating string. So what you have to do, you are taking a rectangle or carbon, suppose a chalk piece is there, a carbon box is there, we will put some rubber bands. The rubber bands should have a different thickness. Okay, then you have to make this uh, rubber bands to vibrate, then you will see that the rubber band which is having more thicker will have less frequency and pitch, and the rubber band which is having less Thickness will have more frequency and pitch. The pitch of the sound decreases with the increase of thickness. When the thickness is increasing, pitch and frequency of the sound is going to be decreased. The next one is there are more activities there on page number 97. So that pitch of the sound depends upon the length of the vibrating force. There you can see that 
a modern carbon number one is yet, and a pencil is kept there. You can look at the page number 97. Then, first we are giving the a pencil the extreme end. We are just making the number one point, right? And we will in, uh, change the position of the pencil from one end to the other end. Then, why you observe the pitch of the sound decreases with the increase in the length. When the length is more, the pitch will be less. And when the length is less, the pitch will be more. Okay, so this is about our today's portion. So, we have this is about music and noise and musical instruments to musical instruments. So, there is a homework for you. On page number 96, there is a table is given. The differences between musical sound and the noise. You can write it on a four size sheet. Okay, read your textbook, the portions and activities very well. Thank you.